Hello, Michael Bull here from the Commercial Real Estate Show or the 2014 National Association of Realtors Annual Conference in New Orleans. We have the opportunity to speak with Hugh Kelly. Hugh Kelly is a PhD. He's also a, a counselor of real estate. In fact, he's the immediate past chair of the counselors of real estate and he's joining us here at the convention. Thanks for joining us, Hugh. Always a pleasure to be here, Michael. Good to see you again. And Hugh has just about to speak to the entire uh, group here about the 24-hour cities, and it's called the cities that never sleep. And you know, if you're moving a business to a particular city, or you're growing in a particular city, or you're investing in commercial real estate or developing, um, or if you're in economic development, understanding what makes these cities uh, thrive is very important. And you, if you will, give us some kind of the highlights or a takeaway of this session about the cities that never sleep. Well, Mike, I've, I've talked to you before about 24-hour cities and how research has shown that they produce superior real estate investment returns for, for investors. So now I want to take a look at the economic development side of, uh, of things and how 24-hour cities and their cousins, 18-hour cities, uh, uh, are function as places where people want to, uh, to move and businesses can take advantage. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about the, some of the major th or the top three things that people should think about today for economic development and for investing in these types of cities. Well, I think of this as, as the old Ballantine three ring sign, mm -hmm. uh, a Venn diagram mm -hmm. that has physical capital, financial capital, and human capital as its three components. And it's where they overlap that, that really counts. And tell us about those three things, if you will. Sure. So most economic development strategies, for as long as I've been in the business, have focused really on the first two of those rings, mm -hmm. uh, physical capital. You know, people love to build monuments. Mm -hmm. Those monuments can be sports stadiums, they can be museums, they can, they can be uh, galleries, you know, concert halls. Uh, think of the Gary Council, the Dis Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles. These are great photo ops for politicians. Right. And they do, it, they do contribute to the city. But most economic development has been about financial capital. It's how do we, we provide tax incentives uh, uh, and assistance for businesses so that they can be lured into, into an area. The third ring, human capital, is what's been neglected, and that's what I think cities uh, now need to focus on. Because the competition for physical capital and for financial capital is very commodity-like. Every city offers the same thing to the same group of desired industries. The competition is fierce. Getting into that game is a losing strategy. Getting into the game of human capital excellence, that's a winning strategy. And human capital is, is more important. I know you're a, you're a major author in the wonderful report of emerging trends, and you talked about human capital being a major force moving forward. So it's something that cities that need to think about more than ever, right? That's true. When you think about it, it's people that populate office buildings, people that shop in the shopping centers, and so their incomes count, people who live in the residential uh, communities. It's all about people. And it's also about jobs, right? It is about uh, jobs, and the generation of, uh, of those jobs increasingly depends upon talent. Uh, and that is what draws companies to a city. If there is a deep and diverse enough pool of talent to make that company productive and profitable. And we all want to move our businesses and we want to build and invest and develop in cities that are growing, that are doing the right things. So you give us some examples, Hugh, of some cities that are doing it right. Sure. And I'm going to stay away from, from my hometown, New York, and, and the LA's and the Chicago's because a, a lot of attention has been given uh, uh, to them. They don't need more. Uh, but let's take a look at the Greenville, South Carolinas at the Nashville, Tennessee's, at the Austin, Texas's. I think they're doing some very exciting things. And tell us what they're doing in Nashville. Well, Nashville uh, has really taken the talent element of this to, uh, to, to the fore. They've built their uh, uh, business planning for the city around a global brand of being Music City USA and all of the supporting services that come into that. And very interestingly, the mayor says that the title he wants to be known uh, uh, for for his term 
is that he was the education major. And that's an investment in your future. Yeah. That's a great plan for a city. That's important. And my mother tells me that I was born in Nashville, but I don't remember that. So. <laughs> and give me an example of what they're doing in a city like Greenville. I mean, some people might not think that that's a city that's doing it right. right? Well, uh, you know, I keep telling my students that there's no point in doing research unless you're willing to be surprised. Yeah. And Greensville is a very, very pleasant surprise. Mm -hmm. They focus their economic development strategy, yes, on bringing uh, 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 industries into, into the area, but they've decided to make their main street in downtown uh, an important hub for the whole uh, metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And so now Main Street Greenville has multifamily housing, it has walk-to-work housing, Companies are building uh, new office buildings in there. And did you know that there are 90 restaurants uh, along the main street of Greenville, uh, South Carolina? Who'd have thunk it? Yeah, I didn't know. And then you mentioned Austin. So it, again, everyone wants to know, know what, what cities are doing right. That's where you want to put your money, right? So what are they doing in Austin? So another talent and technology city for sure. Uh, but one which has played off something that's very, very important that, that I uncovered as one of the four main variables in my 24-hour city research, and that is something called regional distinctiveness. Cities that do best don't try to be homogeneous. They don't try to be like everybody else. They want to be themselves. So I love Austin's motto, keep Austin weird. <laughs> and you know, uh, I've looked at their economic development plan, and of the 25 elements in that plan, 14 relate to the arts, culture, and education. That's focusing on talent. Nice. And of your session today, what might surprise people and our listeners around the country and our viewers about the session and about 24-hour cities and cities that never sleep? I think, I think that it is that, um, that there is no silver bullet. Not one thing to do. Focusing on what you are good at, focusing on what your resources are important. But I think the 80 or 90 percent of cities that still follow the old model of, of big buildings that are photo ops and, and pictures you can put on the wall yeah. and trying to lure away companies from higher cost regions by being the low cost provider, I think they're going to be surprised to hear that that strategy, which is the conventional strategy, is a dead strategy. Yeah. And tell us a little bit more about the 18-hour cities that, uh, that you coined in the Emerging Trends Report. And if you haven't read that report, Emerging Trends Report this year is, is incredible. I know you're a major part of that. Tell us about 18-hour cities. Surely. So Emerging Trends, 20 years ago, developed this idea of the 24-hour city and made the claim that 24-hour cities would be the best places for investment. That's proven to be true. That message has gotten out because of the success of those cities. Well, it's very expensive to become a 24-hour city, but the lessons that you can learn about providing a concentration of downtown housing, trying to get your city population density up over 9,000 people per square mile, get your crime rate down, below 6,000 uh, per 100,000 of, of, of population. Uh, try to encourage uh, things like 24-hour uh, drug stores to, to be around so that people have the capacity to go out and get what they need when they, they need it. That's something that many cities can, uh, can do and that the cities I've mentioned have done very, very successfully. And if we're investing and we live in a community and we would like to have a more vibrant downtown, what are some other tips? I think one of the things that I see in Atlanta where I live is uh, Georgia State and, and Georgia Tech. The education has, has helped. Now we have more housing and more shopping. And so we're starting to get a little bit closer to an 18-hour city in Atlanta. Is that a good, a good step? You know, and you mentioned, you mentioned all of those resources that are focused together along with the High Art Museum and the, and the Music Center in one district, which is the Midtown District. You know, so the Midtown District becomes a very vibrant and, and viable place uh, because it's not just the list of ingredients, it's their chemistry. How do they interact? And so education, housing, restaurants, you know, uh, uh, the arts and culture, and jobs 
if you can get them all within a small group, why it's, it's like putting a bunch of great ingredients in a pot, putting it in the oven, and you, and you get a gourmet meal. That's the, way, that's the way it works. It's the chemistry between the ingredients, not the ingredients themselves that count. And you make it sound so easy. I think we all should just cook it up. Hugh, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> uh, it's a pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, isn't this an exciting event? It's been a great convention. And uh, so, yeah, come out next year if you haven't been here. The uh, commercial part of this convention may be bigger than you think. Michael Bull, National Association of Realtors Conference in New Orleans. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Brokerage, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive suite of powerful commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. Sozo Web Hosting and Cloud Solutions, secure, reliable, and worry-free. Visit sozo.com. That's S-O-Z-O dot com. FIU, Florida International University. Earn your master's in real estate online in as little as 10 months. Visit FIUonline.com. And by France Media, providing exposure to the world of commercial real estate. Visit FranceMediaInc.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional podcasts, videos, or blogs, visit CREshow.com.